Hey guys, welcome back to Saturday Morning Cartooning. Uh, let's take a look at some of your viewer art. Great job in your art, guys. Uh, today we're going to be doing a character who lives in the pineapple under the sea, SpongeBob SquarePants. I'm willing to bet everyone has at least heard of SpongeBob SquarePants. Even if you've never seen the show, most people are aware of his existence as a character. Since 1999, SpongeBob SquarePants has been a popular mainstay on the Nickelodeon network. SpongeBob is an anthropomorphized sea sponge that lives in the fictional underwater town of Bikini Bottom. He's an energetic, super positive, childlike character with a collection of equally energetic and wacky sidekicks. SpongeBob was created by Steven Hillenburg. However, art and animation was not Steven Hillenburg's first area of study. Hillenburg started his career as a marine science educator at the Orange County Marine Institute in Dana Point, California. There, he wrote an educational comic book called The Intertidal Zone, featuring a host of crazy marine life characters, including Bob the Sponge. This unpublished comic would eventually become the basis for the show. At first, his character design was based on an amorphous natural sea sponge without any clearly defined shape. However, Hillenburg thought it would be funnier if his character design was based on an ordinary rectangular kitchen sponge, highlighting the nonsense comedy the show is famous for. This is also where his last name of Squarepants comes in. The show debuted in 1999 and has become a cultural phenomenon, spawning 12 seasons on Nickelodeon as well as primetime specials, several feature films, and a massive global franchise. SpongeBob SquarePants has definitely become a pop culture icon. Okay, let's get started. You're gonna need, of course, paper, pencil that you like, an eraser that you like, and your permanent markers. Remember, be careful around your furniture and your clothing with permanent markers. All right, and let's get started by looking at our reference photo. And if we take a look at SpongeBob, we can see that he is a walking kitchen sponge, basically. So he's sort of like, he's, he's squarish. Um, almost like a, I would say like a, like a, like a walking cereal box. So he's rectangular, but he's not very deep. So let's get started by just doing the basic body shape. And uh, you're gonna see that SpongeBob is relatively easy because he's all one piece with just arms and legs stuck on. So let's draw on his body. And we're gonna draw on the side first. So here is the side of SpongeBob, sort of like Remember, light touch with your pencil. Sort of like, um, I don't know, like a, like a wobbly french fry. And we're gonna do the other side here, but then it's actually gonna come up a little bit this way, creating a little bit of a perspective, meaning we see that illusion of depth, the illusion of thickness. Actually, it can come down just a little bit. All right, so there's our first shape of SpongeBob. And it's not gonna get that much more complicated from that. We're gonna put on uh, face lines. And his eyes, we're gonna use that, use the, um, the corner over here to bend that face line as if it's wrapping around a box, like a string wrapping around a box. And then we're gonna draw in his pants line, which is going to be here. Again, like a string going around a box. Just like that. Good. All right. And this is going to help us get our eyes. Let's put one eye here. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just sketching it in first. And then we're going to put in a cheek right here. And his cheek is going to cut off the bottom part of his eye. So it's going to go right there. And then we're going to use uh, where the vertical line meets the horizontal line, that's where the nose is going to spring out, but it's gonna go down, there's gonna be a line going down a little bit, and then a nose is gonna go right here. And he has a long, a long tapered nose. Remember, tapered means that it's thinner on one side than it is on the other. And then we can draw on that second eye, which is gonna go here. But again, it's gonna be cut off by the nose and by the other eye. If we take a look at the reference photo, you see he has these bulbous eyes, so one eye is cutting off part of the other eye, and of course the nose is cutting off part of that eye. All right, now we can draw in his smile. 
which is going to go into the cheek and then go back into an upper lip. And then his mouth is going to open fairly wide, so about there. But before we finish it, we're going to put in his teeth because he has these two giant buck teeth that come out. And that's where that line of the mouth is going to reach. You're not going to see where the other line, the other side of the mouth reaches because the tooth is in front of it. And then we can draw that little suggestion of a tongue. And then a bottom lip. Okay. And we can draw on a pupil and another pupil. And then he has these very boxy, thick eyelashes. They look like little, little black rectangles. Okay. Then let's sketch on where his arms and legs are going to be. And again, if we take a look at the reference photo, we're going to see his arms and legs just stick on to the sides of the, the box-shaped body. So we're going to draw a little shape right here. It's funny, his sleeves, as if he was wearing shirt sleeves, just stick on to the side of the body. And the other shirt sleeve will be right here. All right. Before we move on to too much detail of the arms, we're just going to sketch in where they are, and they're just going to go right out from the sides. So let's sketch those in. We're just sketching in where they're going to be, and then we'll add in everything else later. So just put in little circles where the hands are going to be. We will build fingers from that. All right, and then... These are just the bottoms of his pants, his pants cuffs. He wears short pants. And the two tiny little sticks coming down for his legs. And then his shoes are probably one of the easiest to draw. They look like two circles fused together. And you're just gonna sketch on a little bit of a heel. And we're gonna shade it in later. We're gonna put a little shine in the front. Um, could add a little curve line to the bottom. That's where his socks are going to be. And they're gonna go about halfway up his leg, a little more than halfway up his leg. And then we'll be able to color that in later. Let's do a hand. So the thumb is gonna go out. And then he's got three fingers and they're gonna be splayed like this. So he's gonna have lots of space in between his fingers. So we're gonna do one. two, three, part of the palm, going into a very thin, tiny arm. Then you can put a little line of plasticity there. Uh, plasticity means lines that you can add to a drawing that make it look a little bit more formed, a little bit more three-dimensional, gives it a little bit um, more dimension, makes your um, drawings look a little um, uh, finish more polished. Let's do that other arm. Thumb, one finger, splayed, two finger, splayed, three finger, part of the palm, back into the wrist, into the arm little line of plasticity that's where his his um, the fleshy part of his hand is going to be making a fold in the skin let's do his uh, square pants and his shirt and his shirt very simply is three triangles three half triangles going down the middle one is going to be his tie just add a little tie shape on the bottom of that middle triangle. And then just a line straight down the middle. Again, it's like a line being wrapped around or a piece of string being wrapped around a box. All right, this will denote the change between his shirt and his pants. And then he has these little black rectangles that represent belt loops. 
So he has one here, one here, then he has one that's going to be cut off by the length of the tie, and then a third one on the front right there. All right. Okay. Um, the last little step of the, the sketch is we have to, if we look at the reference drawing, he has these little curves, kind of accentuating the fact that he's a sponge. So we're going to put these little wavy lines along the length of the body. stopping when you get to the shirt. And then you're gonna put some more wavy lines there where the sponge meets the shirt. And then along the top over here. All right, and we're gonna ink those in later. Then one more thing, just little light circles of where his little sponge holes are going to be. Now we're ready to start inking. Remember, think before you ink. There's certain lines that we're not going to be keeping. Of course, it's gonna be those face lines going around that box right there. Uh, but ink along with me if you're unsure about what is going to be inked and what is not going to be inked. Let's start with his cheek. Let's just get that in there. And then the eye going around it. Remember, part of his eye is cut off by his cheek coming up. I'm going to put in his eyelashes and go ahead and ink those in as well. Let's do, before we do the other eye, let's do this nose. And of course his smile and his upper lip. And do the bottom part of the mouth. Be careful to ink his tooth in and not to go all the way to the other side. Get the tongue in there. And go ahead and ink in the inside of the mouth, everything that's not tooth or tongue. Let's get the other eye in. And remember, you're not going all the way around because most of that circle is gonna be cut off by this eye and the nose. And then go ahead and put in the three little eyelashes. And now we can do the inside of his eye, which is the outer pupil and the inner pupil. We're gonna go back in and color that in later on. Let's do this arm before we do the body. I'm gonna just ink in that little uh, open U shape, and that's what his arm is going to connect to. And do the sleeve around that into the hand. And remember, the little lines like that add to a character's plasticity. And that just means that it looks a little bit more molded, a little bit more three-dimensional. Now we can go ahead and do some of the curvy lines. It's okay if they don't match up completely. You want it to look um, spontaneous. Let's do this arm. We're only gonna see that much of the sleeve. We don't see where it connects to the body like we do with this one, because again, this is a three-quarter side view character. Okay, 
Three little triangles. The middle one is his tie. Then his square pants. We don't have to do squiggly because it's his square pants. So this is the line that denotes shirt from pants. Then we can go ahead and put in his belt loops. Remember this one goes behind the tie and then the last one connects there. Pant cuff, pant cuff. Two legs going down. But then his shoes. Remember, it's two circles fused together with the addition of a heel over here. And then you can color it in, but maybe sketch in that little um, oval right there first and then color in. And that gives the impression that it's a shiny shoe. Same thing to the other one over here. Okay, got the little lower lip over there. And I'm not going to ink in the little circles because I want them to uh, look like they're actually part of the sponge. So I'm gonna color those in first with a different color before we do his base color. But before we do anything else, I forgot one other thing. That's the line of his sock. But before we do anything else, we are going to um, erase our original pencil lines. Try to keep your, your little circles, or at least a faint after image of those circles there, so we know where they go later on. You can't, probably can't see them on camera, but I can still see the faint little after image of where my circles were. So I'm gonna take a colored pencil that's a little bit different than what his yellow color is going to be later on, just a little bit different, and I'm gonna color those in where they were. Let's take a little bit of time and do that. Now we can go back in with the yellow and go ahead and just give him his trademark yellow color. Go around those circles.
And now that I see that color, I want to make it a little bit deeper of a green on those circles. Now that I see that, I want to add a little bit deeper of a green onto those circles so that you could really see them. Let's just go ahead and take a green colored pencil. Just go over those circles a little bit. A little bit darker than what I did. There. That really emphasizes those circles a little bit more. All right. Uh, let's go ahead and do his arms. We're going to do his arms, not his sleeves. Those are going to stay white. His arms and hands. And then just the tops of his legs underneath his pants. Take some blue and do his irises. He's got big blue eyes. Take some pink and do the pink of his tongue. Take some red and do his red necktie. Keep those blue and red markers handy. You're just gonna need them for one quick little thing down here. A blue stripe on his socks, and then underneath it, a red stripe on his socks. And then whatever you have handy, either a marker or a colored pencil or a crayon, just color in his pants brown. I like this particular color brown. It's a little bit lighter than the brown marker that I have. I didn't want it to overpower the picture. Square pants.